here with Dave X, who's the Chief Technologist at Red Hat. Dave, can you tell us a little bit of what's your role at Red Hat Chief Technologist? Yeah, so as you said, I'm the Chief Technologist of our public sector organization. And what I do and, and what my team does is that we work together to make sure that the products Red Hat develops uh, resonate with our public sector customers. So we spend a lot of time uh, uh, working with uh, the technical leadership in, in the government agencies, state and local, federal um, education institutions. And then we'll take the, the people as well as the requirements back to uh, our engineering headquarters and, and work with uh, our engineering leadership to make sure that the products um, design with the requirements in mind uh, to make it uh, uh, useful to our public sector customers. So in our industry, you hear people talk about innovation. I mean, mm -hmm. every company says the word over and over again on a daily basis. Yeah. What does innovation mean at Red Hat, and how can you be a catalyst for innovation? Yeah, so for us, the, the whole thing with innovation, it, it's around, uh, the, the real catalyst for innovation is around open source. Mm -hmm. um, everything that we do at Red Hat is open source. We have thousands of engineers working for Red Hat. All they do is write code all day and give it away which sounds crazy, right? Where it's like, well, wait a minute, your, your competition can get a hold of that code and they can, they can use it and mm -hmm. uh, profit and, and you don't see any of that money. But the reality is, is that uh, you know, we believe that uh, from a software development process by uh, developing out in the open, um, not only does that create better software because you gotta, your code, you can't hide behind a binary. You, you have to be out there. And so you have to write quality code to begin with. Um, the other, and, and that leads to less defects and less security vulnerabilities. Um, the other thing is that we spend um, a lot of time working in those communities as well. So, you know, working alongside our competition mm -hmm. uh, because we believe that if you're a proprietary company, the, the only innovation you're going to get are within the four walls of your company. Uh, whereas if you're part of an open source community, um, the ideas are not just within your organization, but from all over the community, even even from your competition. So mm -hmm. whether they come up with a great idea or we come up with a great idea, we'll work together to build upon it. And and what happens then is that that um, the software that comes out of that is is so much more robust and more secure, and and, and we can come out with features a lot faster than uh, than proprietary counterparts. Mm -hmm. And. You know, staying on the topic of open source specifically, um, open source has come a long way, and yeah. even more so, we've seen that w with your recent announcement about the partnership with Microsoft. Yeah. So, what does that partnership mean to Red Hat, and and really to open source and the future of open source? Yeah. So it's it's a huge uh, thing that we've been working on for years with Microsoft, mm -hmm. and um, it took a long time because it, it it is a very deep relationship that we have with those guys, um, and I, I think it benefits um, not just Red Hat's customers and open source, but also uh, Microsoft's customers as well. Mm -hmm. um, so like with Microsoft customers, you know, they're so used to uh, developing on Windows Server, maybe they're looking at the cloud, they go to do Microsoft Windows Server on top of Azure. Um, and as they are using and consuming Azure more and more, um, they may want to, they may see that the technologies that live on Windows, it may work great, but they may want to have some alternatives. And so we could provide that with our, our Linux platform, you could run our middleware on top of our Linux, you could run it on top of Windows, mm -hmm. um, it's all supported. So it opens choices up to them. For uh, our Red Hat customers, what it does is it broadens the playing field in terms of, of the top three cloud providers, uh, AWS, Google Compute Engine, and Azure, now all run uh, Red Hat's portfolio of products. So. Mm -hmm. um, what that does is that that increases the, the competitive landscape that and, and provides a lot more choice for for uh, Red Hat's customers, and so that forces those cloud providers to deliver more value. Mm -hmm. And lastly, for our for the open source folks, um, one of the things that I think was overlooked in the announcement was um, our adoption of of including uh, .NET Core inside of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So, you know, .NET, that's something that's very Microsoft, very proprietary mm -hmm. for a very long time. Um, and they open sourced it a little while ago. And um, as part of the new agreement, we are not only, uh, uh, you know, working with Microsoft uh, to, to package it and put it in there, but it's also a supported offering. So mm -hmm. uh, for people in the open source community, I think that validates the, the open source model, seeing that Microsoft is embracing open source and we're working together to provide supported technologies. I think that's great. Um, 
What about mobile? So I, I read a survey recently yeah. from Red Hat that said 90% of companies are going to invest more in mobile app development. Yep. So are you seeing companies using open source for mobile app development? Yeah, yeah. So we, we bought a company called Feed Henry. Uh, we renamed the, we productized it and are calling it Red Hat Mobile. Mm -hmm. And the, the uh, we're open sourcing that technology and that will be called Feed Henry. Um, but we look at, from a mobile standpoint, we are seeing uh, just mobile being the uh, platform for engagement for whether it's uh, uh, customers in the private sector or citizens in, in uh, public sector as well. You, know, you think about Uber, um, you know, you're not going to pull out your laptop, boot it up and, and call up Uber. You, you can't for mm -hmm. one thing and it's too cumbersome whereas you pull out your phone and so Uber, the only way they make money is through the, their mobile app yeah. interface. So they're definitely yeah. mobile first. Compare that to on the public sector side, we're seeing this in two areas. One is with um, it making uh, government more efficient. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of stories where customers are, or uh, you know, government agencies are, you know, they're, you know, things like food inspection. They're walking around with clipboards and and um, cameras, and and they're you know they're doing inspections of warehouses. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they they you know they're taking pictures or writing stuff down, and that's so inefficient. Boy, wouldn't it be great if there was a mobile app that could take the GPS location? You take a picture, you could you could tag things, yeah. you could mark it up. Then it all goes in, and if all of a sudden you lose your phone or anything, it's all back up to the cloud. Um, so that's one end of it. The other end is it, is the citizen engagement as well. So we were talking about mobile first. Um, I think that a lot of agencies are seeing mobile as a way to do citizen engagement, um, where you know just to make sure that the, the you know for the um, the agencies to be to increase their relevance or relevance with uh, uh, with their citizens having a mobile app, uh, knowing that uh, people are spending more on mobile devices as opposed to buying laptops anymore or desktop mm -hmm. computers. Um, having that mobile first interface is really important from an engagement standpoint. And and this is all this all goes goes back tying this back to open source, is that. Having a platform uh, where people can do that development, whether you're doing a commercial app like an Uber, or you're doing citizen engagement, or if you're doing an app that is doing you know, FDA inspections, um, having the platform that is open source allows you to have that portability across mm -hmm. mobile platforms. So you could write an application once, deploy it on, um, you, know, you don't have to choose between, oh, every, I gotta assume everybody has an iOS device, or everybody mm -hmm. has an uh, a, um, Android. Imagine years ago when everybody had Blackberries, and now somebody pulls a Blackberry out and everybody chuckles, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Blackberry. Um, <laughs> but, they, but, you, but the thing is, is it, it's like having that cross-platform, you don't need to be tied to the, uh, the particular hardware platform, and, and open source provides that portability for you. Got it. Dave, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for spending some time with SIA today. Thanks.